What's going on, everybody? It's what a weeb. And today, 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 we got a little something special. A little something special. Well, I mean, you could probably tell from the title, but we're going to be discussing the OVA for Bungo Stray Dogs. If you guys don't know, Bungo Stray Dogs is one of mine and Anester's favorite anime of like re- of recent history, I guess. It yeah. is amazing. Oh my god, great anime. And we were going to this OVA thinking, oh, what are they going to do? And... It was pretty I, good. Was I thought pretty it was going to be a joke, to be honest. I was no, like, it was oh. kind of, it, it started off kind of sounding and feeling like that, but then it became serious, and they told us so much like important information. Uh, yeah, it was. I Season thought three. it was really good. Season I three. <laughs> Season, Season three. three, that was all over the comment section. I yeah. I want a season three. Like, yeah. We need a season three. Yes. But. Uh, with this, it just further Im- Im- amplified that idea without going to the end. Um, mm-hmm. We can discuss that ending uh, very last, but yeah, how did it start off, Derka? Well, we know, you know we discussed it being joking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely. So I just wanted to preface it before we start out. We're going to actually upload two videos today, just so you guys know. But we'll repeat it at the end, of course. We just want to let you guys know in the beginning as well. Uh, Owadi Monogatari came out today, but that's like 80 minutes of straight up are uh, you know watching so we want to sit down have proper time and not rush it so that'll be out later tonight just to let you guys know real quick that's all but going back to bungo um so no yeah the beginning typical beginning of a lot of bungo episodes it's kind of just they're you know they're chill they're pretty much chilling in, in the detective office and kunikita's like i have my perfect plan for today i'm gonna you guys can tell me anything you need me to do later screw all of you and he goes off he goes off onto his plan even though you know, the thing the thing you have to know though about Kunikita is that his plans rarely go right, mainly because of Dazai. But today was a little different. Why? Why was that, Nestor? Um, first of all, it almost went off track. First, we firstly by Dazai <laughs> because for whatever uh, the diary that Kunikita writes with, uh, I can't remember the name of the diary creator, but. I don't know if it was actually true or not, but the creator of that diary was in the office looking to talk to Kunikida, and that uh, Kunikida was just like, oh, this is quite the dilemma, because like, he was uh, waiting for the train, and the train, if he didn't go on the train, his entire plan of the day would have gone out of the window, but if he got, he could have met his hero, because like, it's his, it's his hero, he, the, the hero who created the diary of his, like, his life, but he ended up saying no, and then right when he was about, he was regretting his life and he was on the train, the train's about to leave, he notices someone uh, hand off a briefcase, and earlier that day, uh, he was told that there was an information, uh, information was leaked that there was a, bom- a bomber who was looking to give a, a random pedestrian a briefcase for where the bomb was, and he saw it, and Kunikita was like, I can't let anyone die in front of me. So he grabbed, <laughs> he calls the the girl who was holding the briefcase short, and then chibi. that here, okay, Chibi, yeah, I uh, called her Chibi, and then that got her annoyed. He grabbed the the suitcase, ran outside of the train station, and you know he saved the day. There was an explosion, and yeah, it was, Kunikita was looked like a cool guy for a moment, but. The poor Chibi was not having any of that, and uh, she wanted to. She was mad at being uh, misled or used, and she was. She wanted Kunikita to help her out, and Kunikita was no. Was like, no, you can't do that, and then, you know, she pretended to get raped by her, by him. Okay, let's calm down. Rape is a strong word. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, she said, oh, she rips her skirt on purpose, and is like, yo. Uh, if the police come, I'm gonna have to tell them that Kunikita, you know, took me to a back alley. Blah blah blah. blah. Um, but and of course, Kunikita is a very straight laced guy. He's a very straight laced guy. Uh, he would never do something like that. Good man, respectful man. Yeah, but he knows that if he didn't take her with him, he would have to deal with much more headaches. And he already has Dazai to deal with, so he's like, "I right, screw it. You can come along." Uh, Aya, you know. I think Aya is kind of a weird character when she was first introduced to discuss her character because she's probably an OVA only character. Um, you don't know. She probably get put into third season. It was actually this was first episode, last episode of season one, I think. I mean that's so not, not yeah, that's not uncommon to do though. They just added as another episode of the previous season because they use the same opening and ending, so it's technically same season. But um, either way, it doesn't really matter if we don't. We don't even know if season three is announced. 
Uh, Aya, she's a you know she's a perky little girl. Uh, fun little addition to the whole uh, I guess idea of Bungo. Just because if you look at Bungo, it's very similar to anime like kind of like Dorara in a sense where you have a lot of characters, um, but not so much in the fact that they spend so much time on each character. But each character is important, so it's not like they have throwaway characters for no reason most of the time. Um, which I really respect about Bungo, another one of the reasons why we like it so much, along with those dope action sections. But we're getting back to this specific episode. Uh, so, Kunikita takes him out, they're going down the train line area, I guess the tunnel. I guess we can call it a tunnel. And he sees these bombs. He looks away for three seconds. Three seconds! And he turns around, Eye's not there. And he's like, oh, He's like, I, I know these bombs, though. He knows these bombs. Um, we don't know how, we don't know why, but he knows them. So he starts looking for Aya, finds her with a bomb jacket, pretty much, and the bomber comes up behind him and says, if you don't put your pistol down, she's gonna explode. Kunikita, good guy Kunikita, can't let anybody die in front of him if he can help it. So, drops his gun, this man takes, what was that, like a stick? A wooden stick, and smashes it against his head. I thought it was one of those practice katana swords. Was it? Okay, what yeah. is a wooden sword then. Uh, he takes a wooden weapon, there you go, wooden weapon, smashes it against his head, knocking him out. I'm like, that looks so painful when he did it, because he like revved up and pop, popped it. So of course, you know, boy Kunikita is still human, he gets knocked out. He gets knocked out and wakes up all tied up, and we gotta find out who exactly this bomber guy was. So who was it in this game? This sort of came out of left field. It was a guy from Kunikita's past. Who he in previous uh, previously he had stopped him uh, stopped this serial bomber from uh, doing bombings. He caught him, and then this guy was at first idea. It was just uh, we thought it was because because of revenge. That's what Kunikita thought as well, but it wasn't. Uh, this guy uh, whose name is very much escaping me right now, and I apologize completely. Um, there, what was his name? Uh, saw saw something saw Toru. Anyways, uh, he was his name was only mentioned like three times during that entire twenty-four minute if episode. <laughs> um, but anyways, he was uh, he was someone that Kunikida had an encounter with, and Kunikida was like, like you know, I told like, I know you. That's how he knew the bombs, and he was this guy who was previously arrested by Kanza Kunikida was like I like our interrogation where he told me you've got to be strong in the face of evil you got to stay with your merits blah like you know be blunt and just justifiable and all the, that kind of stuff and he was like that crap just rings in my ears like still to this day and it's been years at, or two years afterwards and it still rings in my ears you think that I'm some weak? You think I chose to be chose the life of crime? It's because I'm weak. I chose this life of crime because I'm weak. And he was like, "You think you can? I wanted to do this? No." And you know, it seemed like he was genuinely a good guy and just wanted to, you know, he was just sorry for himself. So it's sort of a sympathetic character, but at the same time, it's like you can't feel sympathetic to someone who Son decides of a to bomber. yeah, like... who decides to turn to terror. Oh can't really say terrorism but like evil acts in general yeah so he's like okay and I can you can't what is your answer he asks uh, Kunikda like what is your answer to me like how are you gonna do this how what is your phase of destruction because the train is about to come and activate all the bombs on the train track and then Kunikda was like you know my answer it's on a page 89 and <laughs> This guy is yeah, like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> and he like opens up page eighty nine. and He's like, stun grenade, Duncan, Duncan Rampa, Dopo, Dopo, Duncan Rampa. It's I'm a different sorry, anime. Man. That's a game. Yeah, I apologize. Dopo Rampa, stun grenade, and then boom, stun grenade, and he Kunikita frees himself. He frees himself and handcuffs the guy. And we're like, yeah, he can do it. He can stop everything. And uh, he's about to rip off the jack, off uh, the bomb, off Ayachan. And then he, she's like, no, you got to stop the the train first. And he goes to the laptop, which has that that was lying for whatever reason out. And I was like, you know, this is what will defuse it. Try to do it. And Kunika's but no, nah, no, nah, that doesn't happen. Nah, -uh. nope, nope. Of course, there's always a twist. 
to everything. Twist to everything. He can't just turn them both off. It's never that easy. This is one of those stupid parts where I was kind of like, this is kind of dumb. It's like, ha, huh, I plan for you to plan this, but no, I plan for that to plan for this type of scenario. Because Kunikido was like, yeah, I had Dabakoi to plan for you. I was like, ha, huh, I knew you were going to get out, so I planned this instead. Um, of the whole, if you deactivate the train bombs, her bomb goes off. If you act deactivate her bomb, the train bombs go off. You can't win. There's no victory. Um, also, I remember the guy's name. It's Katsura Shosaku. Yeah, Katsura so Shosaku was the terrorist guy, the school the school bomber who turned right. train bomber. Okay. Uh, I, just remember, I just remembered it, so I wanted to say it. Um, so finally, yeah, boom, boom. And then you're like, oh no, what's he gonna choose? And Katsura has this whole moment where he's like, ha, huh, you know, prove that you're human too. You know, you're not because he's been call calling Kunikido like a Superman the entire time, a superhuman. But so he's like, prove that you are also human. That you, it's an easy option, save everybody. But Kunikido's like, you're right. You know, I am human, and he does he does go to deactivate the train bombs. But then he goes over to Aya and is like, don't worry, you won't have to you know suffer through the pain by yourself. I guess and, this hero of justice has to go. Yeah, what you yep, said. I was like, yep. oh, this is probably the highlight of your entire. Yeah, time right I was here. like, dang, dude, I got to, I was actually not a terrible character. <laughs> Um, so you see the light bomb, you know, the bomb start to go off, but lo and behold, our favorite resident doctor. What is, what happens, Nestor? Our resident, I still don't understand her power, by the way. Like, I know she can stop literally death, like almost near death experiences, but I don't understand how that works entirely. But so sh she can only heal super, like, uh, fatal like, wounds, mm, a fatal yeah, wound. Fa yeah. yeah, fatal wounds. So that's why she has to open up small wounds. And cause you to With almost die to heal yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> like, she comes out of nowhere, and, you know, it's like, she goes out and she's like, So, I thought I was out and getting groceries, and I hear a familiar stun grenade sound. I'm just thinking, stun grenades have a sound that are familiar? And I'm like, I thought that was really interesting, because earlier they were showing, um, what's his name? Red hair guy. Um... He was chilling. <laughs> he was chilling. I can't remember his name though. But of the other side of the, yeah. but he was chilling. I thought he was gonna show up. In all honesty, mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to our Resident Evil doctor, and you know she saves the day. She saves both Kunikida and Ayacha. And I was like, whoa! And the MP miraculously were there at the same time, mm -hmm. and then he got arrested. And uh, red-haired guy's name is Chuya, by the way. Chuya, Chuya, Chuya. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for looking that up for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chuya, we th I thought I was gonna show up, and then after after the arrest happens, Chuya's hanging upside down because he can manipulate gravity. His gravity power is so cool, man! I love it his is. powers. <laughs> and he's just looking at it and don't know directly who he was talking to, unfortunately. But he was just uh, just scouting out what was happening. He was like, "Oh, nothing bad. It was nothing bad happened?" But if I really, the only reason why I didn't get involved is because Dazai wasn't there. I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Dazai didn't wasn't there, and throughout the entire episode, um, they were referencing how like who the like who um, who would be the next in charge because uh, after the after the the briefcase blew up, the the police were like, okay, the chief isn't here. Who should we contact? And nobody, everyone was debating. Everybody in the office was debating. And then at the very end, we we get a definite answer of who the who the leader is. Am I right? Yep, yep. Obviously, I mean, who's this episode about? It's about our boy Kunikita. And honestly, he's a he's he's a great fit for our leader. You know, he knows how to plan things. He gets stuff done, and everybody respects him. So uh, even if Dazai messes with him, he is his partner. Mm -hmm. He respects him greatly. Uh, nobody like once everybody once he said they said that they're like huh okay you know because Kunikita might not out he, he doesn't outwardly give that leader vibe but he does plan stuff he is the planner he's a tr he's strategic everything he does is strategic him setting off that bomb was on purpose because he put in his diary that the doctor was gonna be walking by or being on the train at that point of time so he bet on that he knew it was gonna happen. Knowing your teammates that well and being able to use their abilities, even if they don't even know that you're there, that that's a pretty good leadership quality in my opinion. Master tactician. But yeah, mm -hmm. 
And also shout out to Ayachan getting uh, rejected at the end as well. <laughs> you don't meet 31 of my 58 specifications, denied. <laughs> and his glasses broke, but you know, it's all fun and games. I don't think Aya should be in the cast, especially since she doesn't have a power. And We don't know that uh, yet, but... We don't know, and plus she she's could. like... I don't even know if she's like a kid or like a midget adult. It's yeah, hard to tell. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, I thought this was a really good OVA. One I of the really better OVAs out there, I think. Like usually OVAs are kind of you know kind of whatever. They're, yeah, fan service or they kind of just they're just like a fun side story. But this this was a side story, but it was kind of important because now we know who the number two is in the organization. Cause, yeah, because I mean you I, could guess it maybe Kunikita, but yeah, you know Dazai is a very important character. It could easily have been him or Rampo. You know, there's a bunch of you know. Because getting that confirmation is really nice. Getting something that actually affects the main story is always really nice. Mm hmm And yeah, uh, we sort of got like a little tip off that maybe the Chief may or may not be heading into his last few missions mm -hmm. for Season 3. But that's a whole different video for a different time. Um, if I think that's all I would really want to say well, Let's about give it a rating OVA. real quick. Um, I would give it... Let's see. I, I liked it, so I'd give it an 8. Yeah, I give it an 8. I mean, I'm comparing it to other OVAs, so like, yeah, definitely an 8. I mean, like, <laughs> as an OVA, I'd probably put it as a 9. But like, as an episode by itself, and like, adding it up to the story, I'd say 8 is a very fitable, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, it's, it's a good number. But yeah, yeah. guys, uh, if you guys did enjoy make sure this discussion, make sure to hit that like button, it really does mean a lot. Make sure in the comment section below, write down what you thought of this OVA, as well as make sure to hit that subscribe button to see more content from us. And the description also holds all our social media, so make sure to follow all of that. This has been Anuster. And this has been Durka. And Sayonara. Sayonara.